create custom static titles, tickers, and use the animated templates available in vMix. vMix 4K and Pro will also allow you a little bit, I'll just let you know that by default it will create a 1080 title. So if you want to change the resolution, just go to new and then go to the resolution you want to use. All right, so on the left hand side here, you'll see all of the different elements that you can use in your title. So text, uh, rectangle, circle, triangle, uh, image, 3D text, and um, a ticker. So you use these elements to create a title on your canvas, which is the middle section here. So any element that you want to create uh, in your title, you can put it on the canvas and create it there. Now on the right hand side, you'll see that we have layer one. So when you first create a title in the title designer, it will create a global layer, which is layer one. Now, when we add an element to the title, you'll notice that it will appear under layer one. Now we can create additional layers by clicking this button here or using the subtract to remove it or hit the delete key. Um, but I'll show you how to set up layers a little bit later on. Okay, so let's just create a basic static lower third using a rectangle. So I'm gonna select the rectangle here I'm going to use the left mouse key and I'm going to create it down at the bottom, like so. So I can resize this, I can select it, I can drag it around, um, I can spin it around, I can press Control Z to undo, um, I can center it globally like this. I have alignment here, so you notice these green lines will appear. So this is the global alignment, that's center and middle. I can bring that down centered, I can keep it within the safe areas. So usually I'll keep these within the safe area, which is good for broadcast. Now I can turn these safe areas off if I wanted to by pressing this button here. So I've got a basic rectangle. Now I can also right click the rectangle. Uh, I can cut, copy, paste. Um, I can edit the fill, which is what we'll do a little bit later on in regards to the color or a fill image. Edit the stroke, which is a border. Uh, and then I can also use it to bring forward or send backwards based on the elements in the layer. I can also choose this area to align. So I can go align left, align center, I can right click to dock it, so I could dock it to the bottom, to the top, I can fill the entire screen if I wanted to, um, I can press Control Z to undo that, uh, and then I can create the group layer, which I'll show you how to do a little bit later on. All right, so now I've got my basic rectangle. I don't really like a bright red rectangle, so let's just make some changes to it. So up the top here is where you can make changes to your elements that you've added to your title. So first of all, I'm going to change the fill. So I can change the fill color to a nice, bright purple. Um, I can choose to change the alpha for that color of the rectangle and I can also choose to have a gradient or a picture fill for it. So if I wanted to go a gradient, uh, by default you've got this color here, I can change the color and then the last color here will be a uh, transparent. So this is what it will look like by default but I don't want to have a transparent like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different purple like so and click apply. So now I've got a dark purple to a lighter purple here. Now I can also then add different stops. So I can add stops here to create different looks for my gradient and change the color and that type of thing and alter the positioning and that if I wanted to. Up the top here I can change the angle, I can select a radial um, gradient and I can also choose how it wraps here also. So once you've settled on what you wanted to do you can click apply and then we'll click OK. So now I have a gradient. Okay, so I can also add a picture fill if I wanted to. So I can add one of these elements here um, if I wanted to choose to do that. However, I don't particularly want that. I'm just gonna leave my purple gradient. All right, so next to that, you'll see the stroke. So the stroke refers to a border. So it's an inner border. So it will be a number of pixels inside the, the outside of the um, element that you've got. So let's set this to four. We can set the style and we can choose a color. So I'm just going to leave it white. Oh, should we make it? No, we're gonna leave it white. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we can choose to arrange it, uh, but we're going to move to the next section in the menu. So this is style. So we've set some preset styles if you wanted to use them. Uh, for example, like so, like these are preset that you can use without having to go through your own um, setup. You can just choose to use one of the ones that we've created for you. Now I'm going to set up my own custom one because you know we're doing a custom uh, video today. Now on the format screen, this is fairly important if you want to get everything specific. So I can use this slider across here to change the size of the image, or I can use uh, I can double click on it, press the number, and then hit enter. So I'm going to change this to a very specific dimension, which is handy 
when you're working with specifics, you want everything to be perfect. Now I can choose to rotate um, different on different axes here um, if I wanted to. Okay, so I don't really want to make these changes, so I'm just going to send this back to how it was. Uh, and obviously I can change the location to be very specific as well. So sometimes when you're lining these up, even though we do have a line locking, sometimes you need to be very specific with the location. So you may want to use this menu here in order to create your location. Now you'll see radius here. Now radius refers to being able to create a rounded corner. So I can create a rounded rectangle like so by changing uh, that information. Uh, and so yeah, now we'll move on to the effects menu. I can choose the opacity for the entire element here. Um, I can give a shadow. So these are not customizable. These are very basic shadows here that you can choose and the color of them and alpha of the shadow. Again, they're not customizable. Um, again, we've got a reflection here if you wanted to add a reflection to it, uh, but these are set sizes like the shadow. Now I can choose to skew this as well if I wanted to, if I wanted to make a cool um, skew like so. I can choose to use a texture flip. So if I had an image, if I was had an image fill, I could flip it horizontally and vertically. Um, I can create a mask. So if I had an, a second element like so, um, I could mask this with the other one so that it's only going to show up within that mask. Get rid of that. I'm going to delete this rectangle. You can delete an element by selecting it and deleting it um, or using the buttons up here surface again uh, and then I can also choose to crop the image as well uh, and I can choose the feather so typically if you want to do a hard cut you'll need to use not use the feather uh, and then drag these in now you'll notice that the border isn't continuing so that's something to keep in mind because the border is of the total element and this is cropping that particular element which does include the border so keep that in mind if you're overlapping or layering something but now we've got our basic rectangle that we want to use for our production title. All right, so one of the important things is adding some text. So first of all, I'm just going to make sure this was aligned. I don't remember what I did to it, so I'm going to click Align Center. So now I've got my rectangle. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit to put it around the safe zone, like so. And now I'm going to add some text. I'm going to go to the text section, and I'm going to add text to this. So you just click your right, left click the mouse and then drag the text block. Um, I can align it to the top. You can see there that we have uh, an alignment. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. I'm just going to right click and align this in the center. So we've got that. And I think, how wide do I want this to be? I don't know about that wide, but I can also go to format to make sure that I have a specific width if that's what I want. I'm just going to make that exactly 800. And then I'm going to choose what to do with this text. So I want to make sure it's centered and middled. You don't. You, all of these are entirely up to you, how you want to make your um, title look. I can alter the text here. Now, if you want to use things like bold, you'll need to use this drop down menu here because this is where the uh, font elements are. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I can choose different fonts if I want to. Uh, I can choose a word wrap and I can also choose to um, change the way the text works. So if I select shrink here, no matter what I put into the text, uh, element, it's going to constantly shrink and lower the font size uh, without going outside of the boundaries, which is pretty cool if you've got something with a lot of text or an unknown amount of text going into it. Um, I can choose the color of the text. I've just selected white here. I can also have a border um, or a stroke on it. Uh, and so yeah, that's my text that's created. So I'm good to go with that first lot of text. Now I can just go ahead and create a second lot of text like here. Or if I really wanted to, I could delete that and I could right click or control C and control V. And you can see now I've got text block two. So if I wanted to, I could then just grab text block two and bring that down here. Now, as you can see, because it's lining up with the top text there, this, this is actually a little bit too big. So I'm going to move the actual text box smaller and I'm going to make the text itself smaller because usually with the, the lower line, it's going to be a little bit smaller. So a little bit too much. Let's go this one here. And let's distinguish it, make it, no, I can't do that. Let's just leave it as it is. Okay, so now I've got text block one and text block two. Um, they're ready to go, they're lined up. Uh, just to double check, I can right click, I can align that in the center. 
um, make sure this is right, align that in the center too. Okay, so those are both now properly centered and how I want them to be. So what I can do now, I can also choose what I want to have here. So I could actually add the real text in here if I wanted to, so I didn't have to edit it in Remix. But I'm usually just going to put a placeholder like so. Oops, don't mean to that. Uh, and then on the right hand side here, I'll need to choose what I want Vmix to see. So I'm going to call this headline and this one description. Okay, so you'll notice in Vmix here we've got headline.txt and description.txt. So this is one of the templated ones that we've got set up. So in order to make sure the headline and description go in that order, in the GT title designer, I'll just make sure that headline is above description. So I've just dragged that up the top. So now headline is above description in the title. If you've got a lot of different elements, it's important to kind of do that so that you've got the most important thing at the top and you can kind of remember how it all flows through. Okay, so now we've got our lower third. I can go ahead and I can save this. I'll go up here, go to save as. Um, I'm just gonna save this as a this lower third. Just wanna replace the one that I'd already created. And so now I have my um, lower third ready to go in vmix. So let's just see what that looks like. So we'll go back to vmix. Uh, let's just close this one down and then go to add input and then go to title. Now, one of the cool things about the GT title designer is that if you've been working on a particular title, it would appear here in the recent section. So you could also go to browse and then select it, um, but you can also go to recent and it should be there as well. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got headline, description, so we have the ability to, that's exactly what we created before for this particular title. So now we can go ahead and we can add what we want here, um, just like we would in normal production. And now we can overlay this, and we've got hello and hey. So for this overlay title, we can actually animate it a little bit, so we can make it a vertical wipe, wipe like I have, I could do like a slide reverse as well. Um, so when this slides into it from the side and slides back out. So you can add some basic animation elements to an overlay um, for a static title. So that's, um, that's how we set up a basic static title in the GT title designer. Now, before I go, I will show you something else as well. So how to add an image. So I can go to the image.